Hello, my name is Dorothea Jensen, and today I'm recording another video bubble about my historical novel for junior high and high school kids called A Bus from Lafayette. Today I'm going to talk about corporal punishment in schools in the 19th century. It was actually accepted behavior for teachers to basically whip a child's hand with a rawhide, a leather strap, or with a ferrule, which was about two feet long, made of willow. Both of these sound very painful, say the least, but both were accepted practice in the 19th century in schools. Please tell me more about Mother, ma'am. What was she like as a child? She used to be exceedingly naughty sometimes, but our mother usually caught her out. Caroline was lucky that our parents did not believe in corporal punishment. What is that? I asked. Spanking or whipping children to correct their behavior. But you must believe in it, as a teacher, I mean. The former school marm frowned at me. Heavens, no! I never raised my hand to a child. I thought that schoolmasters who did so were failures at their job. Really? You never even raised a ferule? A ferule? Certainly not. I'm sorry to tell you, however, that corporal or physical punishment did not end with the 19th century. In 1977, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that school corporal or physical punishment is not cruel and unusual punishment. Because of this decision, uh, whether or not corporal punishment should be allowed in public schools is thus up to the individual states. And I have discovered that 19 states still allow corporal punishment in schools, although it's usually done with a wooden paddle on the bottom and not with a leather thong or a ferrule on the hands. This map shows which states allow corporal punishment to this day. Many organizations out there are working to ban all corporal punishment in schools.